310-831-0864. Stations, your final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds until airtime. Duck Insider. We need to get community. We need this thing to be bigger than just our little circle of players and coaches. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon. With two seconds on the clock. He hits it. That's the bigger picture in this thing. Allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue collar mentality this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it. The Ducks have won. We get to struggle together and we get to have joy together. The Ducks are Pac 12 champions. champions. I am so proud right now to be the head coach of Oregon. Catch me. Touchdown, Oregon. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. I am going to have a bodacious day. Thank you, Alex Stimson. It is a shortened week. We won't have a Duck Insider on Friday because we've got postseason football. Pac-12 championship game, 5 o'clock, ABC. 3 o'clock pregame show across the Oregon Sports Network. I'll be there. Jerry and Jorgie, of course, will have the call. Pac-12 championship. The rematch we've all been waiting for. Oregon, Washington. Uh, ducks and dogs. Coming up today, also, Oregon Volleyball head coach Matt Ulmer will be with us. We've got postseason volleyball at Matthew Knight Arena starting on Thursday. The Ducks will be in action. They're hosting the first and second rounds here at Matthew Knight Arena coming up. Matt Ulmer with all the updates for you here in just a little while. Uh, we've also got Damon Merkerson joining us, Senior Associate Athletic Director. And we're going to buck a trend today. We're going to buck a trend with Damon today. Also, Morgan Hood from the Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling team will join us because she was actually just part of a trip and a summit in relation to the Pac-12 and SWAC partnership. Oregon men's basketball playing at Florida A&M. A lot to cover. A good trip for the Ducks uh, as part of that celebration, really, of HBCUs. We're going to talk about that coming up. And, of course, Oregon football, look. We've all been waiting for this. The team has even been waiting for this. A lot of the student athletes met with the media today. The Quack video crew just came upstairs from finishing up interviews. We'll have them all for you on the GoDucks YouTube and on the show over the next couple days for you. But let's jump into last night, Dan Lanning's press conference. I don't think you need a whole lot of motivation for this 5 o'clock Friday night kickoff in Sin City. It's brought to you by the Wyoming Valley Cancer Institute Research Center. Fight like a duck with exceptional cancer care close to home. Dan Lanning fighting like a duck in the press conference last night. Coming off of a, a fun one this past weekend, um, obviously it was fun to see our players get out there and play you know, extremely well and uh, a fun environment. Autzen Stadium was unbelievable and uh, expecting some of the same things for our volleyball team this week as they host a big tournament. So um, we can open it up. Excited to go play this game uh, Friday. Obviously, having played this team once before, what are some of the lasting memories and, and what are some areas that you really are going to be dialed in to improve upon from the previous performance? Yeah, we, I mean, we didn't uh, finish, didn't win the game last time. So that that's the kind of thing that sticks with you. Um, but, you know, our coach has been working extremely hard as soon as our game was over with as far as getting prepped and so are our players. So we've had some really good uh, days of practice here so far. Excited for another good day tomorrow. Michael Penix hasn't quite been the same quarterback the last six games since you guys did play them. Is there something uh, that you've picked up on as to why that is and what's what's made him less effective the last six games? I think he's still won every single game, you know, and uh, maybe he hasn't had some of the stats that he's had early in the season, but he's obviously a really talented quarterback, a really good quarterback. So, um, you know, it's late in the season. Everybody gets a little bit banged up. I don't, you know, but to me, he's still playing really elite football. Getting back to this game is obviously one of your biggest goals since playing them in October. Now that you're here, what's the energy like among the players? And do you at, at times have to kind of temper that energy to kind of keep them focused? You know, we've got great energy. Um, and I don't think it's really my job to necessarily temper the energy, but, but more so make sure that we maintain the focus on where it needs to be. And our guys have done a great job of that. They realize that energy doesn't win games, execution does. How well do you feel like you guys generated pressure on Knicks, or on Penix the first time around? And just how important is that going to be? 
Yeah, I think it's just as important that, you know, Russian coverage work together. You know, we were able to get some hits on him at the same time, you know, he was able to complete some passes when we were able to get hits on him. So I think it's really important that it's, you know, it's a combination. You know, you want to have great rush. You want to be able to get um, to the quarterback, which very few people have been able to do, um, but also do a good job of matching routes and patterns in the back end. Uh, we saw how last week you had the fourth quarter of the Oregon State game playing in the locker room. You had those one in the trenches billboards everywhere. Will you be doing anything similar this week as a motivational tactic or is it not needed this week? Yeah, I mean, we always have, you know, a plan for ways that we're going to motivate our players. Um, but I'll say this one doesn't require a lot of extra motivation. Bo in the second half of the season has made some passes that are extremely high level passes and he's done it on a weekly basis. But this past week between the touchdown to Troy at the end of the half, the pass to um, Tez over the defender there, what have you seen in these last six games from him that's allowed him to connect on more deep throws compared to the beginning of the season, complete higher, more difficult, tighter window passes the last six games? Yeah, I think Bo's always had that ability. He's playing at an extremely high level, um, and you're, everybody's seeing it right now. You talk about uh, the caliber player he is. He's gotten better and better every single week of the season, right? And you can't go back to a game like, okay, well, he played – you know, a little bit better. He, he's literally played consistent the entire season and been, you know, playing at a really, really high level the entirety of the season. And uh, he's playing as good as anybody in, in the nation right now. It's it's really apparent. 2021, you guys lost to Alabama and then came back and beat them a couple weeks later. Do you pull any experiences from that and kind of just learning how to, you know, play a team twice and learn how to better prepare for them? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think, you know, you pull experience from every experience that you've had in your life, but that's certainly one that, you know, is, is similar in a standpoint of, you know, you got to play the game. And uh, every time you go out there and play the game, there's an opportunity for it to go one way or another. And, you know, we, we're certainly going to use the first game as a place to look at where could we have improved and attack a lot of those, those places and then try to figure out where their strengths are, um, where we can, you know, attack those as well. Obviously, Troy and Tez have really collectively stepped up their game and have played really, really well. Specifically, how do those two maybe complement each other's skill sets and what makes them so difficult to defend? Yeah, I think we have a really good, you know, wide receiver room. And uh, part of the, part of what makes them special is having a quarterback that can throw it to them, right, and find them in tight windows. But we're able to move those guys around, you know, the position versatility that those guys play with. They, they play in a lot of different personnel groups and in a lot of different places on the field. And that makes it hard defensively to take somebody like, like those guys away. Along those same lines, Tez's season has been incredible. I don't know if people are talking enough about it. Um, what just has allowed him to have the second half of the season that he's had and 70 catches, close to 1,000 yards now? Yeah, it just goes back to the rhythm that we're building. You know, and early on in the season, we talked about we want to be playing our best ball at the end of the season, right? And I think you look at our team and you'll see a lot of guys that have consistently improved, gotten better, um, a scheme that's adapted and gotten better and built off of what we've done. I think we do a lot of different stuff off of previous looks that's, that uh, isn't necessarily the same. And he's done a great job of building off of that, um, taking advantage of the opportunities that come his way. During the cinematic recap, you used Mariano Rivera as a reference. When did you start to utilize other sports and other guys like that to try to, you know, bring, say, baseball example and use it for football? Yeah, really, since the beginning, we've always tried to find, you know, whatever fits. Um, there's a lot of different things that might carry the message that we're looking for, but that one certainly fit. Last week, when we were talking about having a closer mentality. You know, why not use the greatest closer of all time? Gordon Burch had a bunch of pressures against USC, a bunch against a really good Oregon State offensive line. I'm just, just kind of curious what's been clicking for him the last few weeks or what, what you see on tape. Yeah, the, the player that we all knew uh, Jordan could be. And he's a powerful guy. He's explosive. Um, he's really executing the plan, you know, the rush plan really well right now. And I think he would be the first one to tell you that it helps having great players around him too because it's hard to take a guy, a guy like that away um, when he has talented players around him and talented guys in coverage. But he's playing at a really high level. I'm really proud of the progress he's made. Are there perils of playing a team twice? Is there anything specific that you can key in on when you played Washington and you came up short that, that close margin, what, what are some of the things that maybe you can make most sense in going after against yeah. twice? Yeah, I, I really won't get into specifics as far as the game plan, but um, there's critical moments we, we didn't win, right? You look, um, some critical downs, some critical situations um, that we didn't win. Um, you did, didn't walk away and felt like we dominated in each phase. You know, each phase there was, there was pieces we won and pieces we lost. Um, but really it's about, you know, attacking some of those moments as far as what you do differently or what you do the same, you know, I'm probably not going to hop into that because I don't necessarily want to tell anybody else what we're doing. Why is it so difficult to defend Roma Dunze and take him away from them? Yeah. I mean, if you double them, then you're going to be short in the run game. Um, if you, uh, 
you know, don't double him. He has a one-on-one. He has an opportunity to win. He attacks the ball in the air extremely well. Um, he's got, got great speed. He kind of runs every route in the, in the route tree. Um, and he has a quarterback that can get it to him. So really presents some great challenges. It's one thing that I think they've done a really good job of is building their run game the last, you know, since we've played him, I think that's something that's really stepped up um, and improved. And that only makes him even more of a, a dangerous target. Just going to follow up and see if there's an update on Gary. And then regardless, how have you seen the, the depth that receiver developed maybe behind your core four guys? Yeah, I think um, we have a really good group in that room and some young guys that could certainly be contributing and helping us. We just have some guys that have been playing at a really high level um, there with them. You know, uh, a couple of the benefits of this game is now that your postseason play it no longer affects redshirt issues as well. So that could allow guys to have some more opportunities. Um, as far as Gary's out there and, and getting better, I think we'll uh, be in good shape to have him this weekend. How well do you feel like you guys have ran the football the last second half of the season? Uh, at times really well and at times could have been better. Um, you know, I think that we weren't, you know, we're a little more out of rhythm this this past game uh, with some of our run game, but we were obviously able to hit some, you know, explosive shots. And that's going to happen when you have really good running backs. People are going to start to load the box against you and try to take that away. So um, something we have to be able to continue to work on. Um, but when we've needed to be able to run the ball, we have been able to. I understand you're probably focused on other things right now, but you've got Brian Kelly making the rounds on TV telling voters why they should vote for Jaden Daniels was Heisman. Curious to you, anything to say about Bo in that case? Well, Bo's obviously an elite player, and we're still playing football. I think that speaks to the caliber of player that Bo is. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that we're competing for a championship, you know, and leads the nation in passing. It's obviously, you know, I'm, I don't memorize all of Bo's statistics, but just watch Bo play and watch how much of a difference he makes for us. Um, but just as important uh, of that award, you know, what that is to Bo and our team, um, he's more excited about getting to play in a championship game this weekend. And I think anybody that's watched Bo Nix play, the caliber that he's played, recognize that he uh, definitely deserves merit for that, that award. I'm curious what Dante Manning has showed you guys during practice to kind of lock down that second corner spot with Jalil out to, and kind of move ahead of Triquez and, and Nico in that sense. Yeah, I think we have a lot of corners in that room that have done a great job of competing. What was exciting to see for Dante is, you know, some of those 50-50 balls, you know, being able to go up and get um, a pick last week was huge for him. And I think you don't really get to rep – you can do everything you want to replicate that in practice. It's hard to replicate it until it really happens in game experience. So having some of that great experience, he started making some of the plays that we uh, certainly expect him to be able to make. And uh, – uh, look forward to seeing him continue to grow as a player for us. Wanted to get an update on Jaleel Florence and Rod Pleasant if they'll be able to go this week. And additionally, how the depth of corner and safety plays into how you go about deciding whether to play a third safety or a third corner when they're going to, they seem to have McMillan back, though Polk is limited. But if they have all three of them, how that plays into playing Taishim as the third safety versus a third corner. Yeah, um, I'm expecting us to be able to have, you know, some of those guys back. Still have to go wait and see as the week progresses. That's kind of the way it goes this, at this point in the season. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll play whoever we need to play to have success. You know, we have plenty of DBs here that can play good football for us. Um, you know, plenty of safeties, plenty of linebackers. Um, again, not to divulge our plan, but we'll match personnel and, and uh, go out there and give it our best look. On Friday, you said you haven't been around a team more connected than this one. What exactly does that mean? What do you see from your group that, that makes you say that? Yeah, genuine love for each other. You know, uh, an excitement for when their teammate does extremely well. You know, there's, there's, there isn't selfishness on this team. Um, there aren't a lot of me guys. It's really about the team. Um, they spend time with each other outside of the building. It's not just football, right? They, you know, watch movies at each other's house. They go out and eat together. Um, you know, they have real relationships. Um, it's not just go to your dorm room and shut the door, you know, and that's something that I certainly appreciate. When you get this late into the season, how far back will you go and watch film from Washington? Yeah, all the way back, right? We'll look at um, film from last season. We'll look at film from previous stops for coaching staffs. You know, we try to dig and make sure that we have all the issues addressed. Is there anything behind Camden Lewis's current struggles that's not mental? And how do you try to weigh all of that when determining whether or not to play Grant, but if the red shirt is not an issue, nevertheless, it's a huge setting to potentially be putting him out there. So how do you try to address uh, and, and remedy an issue with Camden, however, which way you choose to do it? Yeah, practice. You know, he had a game winning field goal today and practice um, executed it really well. You know, we continue to push every, every single player on our team from a positional standpoint to who can give us the best opportunity to compete and, uh, play well you know he's made a lot of big kicks here I expect him to continue to do that and um, sometimes there's struggles kind of like golf game kicking can be the same at times so um, but Cam's a pro I, I, he knows what we expect from him and like I said today we recreate those situations in practice and he made a big kick t today in practice 
the portal opens up on on Monday. You guys have obviously been very successful there. Um, how do you go about preparing for it? So things are already happening right now. Um, just kind of what's your, your assessment of just what Monday will mean for this program? You know, we have people in our organization that always keep their eyes open um, for what opportunities might be out there to enhance our program, but that's certainly not uh, my focus right now and certainly not our coaches' focus right now. We're completely focused on, you know, what's ahead of us this season to prepare our players to play as well as we can this season, um, not really focused on next season. It's the same thing I've asked our players to do. There's some guys on our team probably when the portal opens will look to uh, other opportunities that, that could exist. That's just the reality of college football. But I've asked them to put that on the back burner right now and focus on their team. So um, we have a bunch of guys committed right now um, that are working extremely hard out there on the practice field. Like I was extremely impressed with our look teams today and how hard they went, the effort they gave, some really tough looks. Um, but that speaks to guys that aren't necessarily getting all the limelight and the attention. Uh, on Saturdays, but they're just as critical to our success. And that's really everyone in the organization's focus right now is where we're at in this moment, not really next week, um, not really two days from now, really right now. Before the October 14th matchup, we talked about Braylon Trice and how his impact was greater than his statistics. Since then, his statistics are starting to, to pick up in a big way. Is that something that he's been doing differently to just create those numbers, or are they scheming him into some situations and, and running stunts and games and twists to, to kind of free him up? Well, it's probably just exactly what I said, that the stats aren't always indicative of what a player is able to do. Um, but he's a good player, and that's obviously showing up for him and making plays for him and, and doing a really good job there. It's, it's probably a combination of both. They're, I'm sure they're trying to get him favorable matchups um, out there on the field and uh, take advantage of his skill set. Jafar Muhammad, their cornerback, is – Played really well the last few weeks. Had a great game against Oregon State. What, mm -hmm. what do you see on tape that kind of enables him to do that? Well, ball production. I mean, just being around the ball and when, when he has opportunities around the ball, he's you know takes advantage of it. So he's a guy that is is really heady player. He has what I'd call football IQ. You can see that you know he's natural awareness of where the ball is at, where he's being attacked, and uh, makes it very challenging for for the opponent. That's Coach Lanning, weekly press conference every Monday. It's a shortened week, so today, a Tuesday, was actually a Wednesday practice, and that means tomorrow, Wednesday, is actually a Thursday practice, and then the Ducks will travel on Thursday, but that would have normally been a Friday for the Ducks, and then kickoff is Friday Night Light style, 5 o'clock on ABC. We'll have a 3 o'clock pregame show across the Oregon Sports Network. Did I get that right? I think that, that made sense. Okay. I'm Joey Mack, and when we come back, Damon Merkerson – and this is the new segment that we're bringing from our senior associate athletic director. It's Damo and Merkerson and friends. Every week now, every time he comes on, it's Damo and Merkerson and friends. Morgan Hood is here from the Acrobatics Tumbling Team. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Make the most of your holidays with a new Toyota at Toyotathon. From ski trips to holiday shopping, you'll be thanking yourself all season long. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers end December 5th. Toyotathon ends January 2nd. Participating dealers only. Toyota, let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Make the most of your holidays with a new Toyota at Toyotathon. From ski trips to holiday shopping, you'll be thanking yourself all season long. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers end December 5th. Toyotathon ends January 2nd. Participating dealers only. Toyota, let's go places. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. For many military veteran caregivers, their caregiving journey starts earlier in life and lasts longer. 
Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for a free military veterans guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, we're here in the Country Financial Studio. Okay, so Damon Merkerson and friends. We'll start with just the Damon Merkerson shot for those of you that are watching. Our Senior Associate Athletic Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging. He has made it a point that every time he comes on the show, because I rotate through the athletic suite, right? All the people mm -hmm. that are in the corner offices, I just go in a circle and they rotate through each week. Well, Damon was like, you know... I don't. I don't need to do two whole segments. I've got like let's bring in some student athletes, and to that, me and Scott were like, "Yeah, that sounds great." So this week, Morgan Hood is with us from the Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling team. Uh, so hello, welcome to the studio. Hello, hello, thank you. So there's a tradition that we have, um, and I really am hoping that that D Damon and friends did not relay. That. I did not. I did not. Uh -oh. Going in so, blind. Um, if you looked real close at the whiteboard when you walked in here in the studio, we have a leaderboard for the two-minute life story. Okay? Oh. So we time you, and the first time anybody comes on the show, you have to tell your two-minute life story. <laughs> and, of course, you're an athlete. You're competitive, <laughs> right? You're going you're gonna to nail this. I have the utmost faith. So are you, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. The two-minute life story of Morgan Hood. Go. <laughs> My name is Morgan Hood, and I grew up in Houston, Texas. Growing up, I was a gymnast, and I competed all the way from level two up until level 10, and that's how I got recruited to come here and do acrobatics and tumbling. I'm interested in problem solving, so I do product design. That's shorter than two minutes. That was 21 <laughs> seconds. Woo, I win. <laughs> so if it was golf, you're you're winning. I think that was pretty good, though. You were, like, it's quick, impressive. efficient. It's efficient, yeah. I mean, I know, I know who you are. But now you have, like, another minute 39 <laughs> if you want it. I'm I mean, totally it's yours. good. Okay, <laughs> all right. So the reason that uh, we wanted to talk this week, uh, there's a ton of things going on, and we are going to buck a trend. So, Damon, I'm going to bring this up. Okay. It's, it's cool. So the, 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 the last time that, that Damon was on the show, it was Oregon and Washington week. Mm -hmm. So far, <laughs> he's the only senior administrator w that didn't get a win at, at the end of the week. And I want everyone to know mm. that I didn't even think once about this. Mm. Damon walks in yesterday mm. and was like, hey, mm -hmm. is this going to be an issue? I, I did. I said that. So are you, were you a superstitious athlete? You know, not really, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, 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 you notice those things, right? I think with, with athletics, everything's, you know, ritual, right? Consistent, consistent, consistency. So you, okay. you just have, you tend to notice certain things and, you know, that blaring, you know, coincidence <laughs> stuck out to me and I was very nervous about coming on here like, ah, don't want anyone to hate me. Okay, so. Our assignment this week is to buck the trend, right? Yeah. yeah. Get the confidence yeah. back. And, Absolutely. And, and, and I promise you that no one thought about it except you. I know. I know. That's just the, that's just the old athlete in me. Yeah. You know, I need to get that out of my system. Yeah. Okay. So that's part one. But then part two, you both uh, have just gotten back from a tremendous experience, and you've got the sweatshirt that you have to show off to yeah. everybody yeah. To, to, to tell us. But So let's start with you, Damon. You went with the Oregon basketball team as part of the Pac-12 and SWAC Alliance. First, let's back up a bit. Tell fans a little bit about the alliance and, and, and the, the community engagement that's been involved, uh, how it all got started, and what you've experienced with it so far. Absolutely. So this is uh, a part of a legacy series between the Pac and SWAC conference where you know we pretty much are uh, using sport to tell bigger stories right sport to talk about civic engagement um, and this alliance is uh, a collaboration with the historically black colleges and universities within the SWAT conference uh, each team from both men's teams and women's teams have educational sessions uh, you know visit museums and talk about again overall civic engagement within the, within their institutions and uh, how we as institutions and we as athletic departments commit to that so what what I did with last year's FAMU coming to play against us here, you know, I collaborated with some of our campus partners to figure out how we can expand that, right? How can we get the institutions involved on in a larger level? So this this experience led to a creation of bringing some students mm -hmm. from Oregon, students and student athletes, 
along with the basketball team to participate in a little summit. So it was a cool experience. I, I left there with some gifts, as you can see. I got a nice little. So those of you that can't hoodie. see this sweatshirt, Nickelodeon partnered with Florida A&M, the Rattlers. Shout out to Hey Arnold fans everywhere <laughs> with the sweatshirt. I mean, so you yeah. brought home multiple of those. I did. I did. I can't. I can't. You can't go get a gift without getting your wife a gift. So I made right. sure I got yeah. her a well matching, yeah. a matching Good. sweatshirt with uh, with Susie from Rugrats. For those yeah. who remember Rugrats. There's new Rugrats now. There are new Rugrats. Ah, I don't know if I'm. I'm a little I, old look, head. I, I look, need to. I, my son is now. Let's see, 15 <laughs> months old. Yeah, yeah. And so he's starting to understand what it means. So mm -hmm. I'm, I, you know, we're into the Rugrats era, right. I think. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, man, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm an old head though, man. Susie, that's my Rugrat. Yeah, right? I Susie, get it. My Rugrat, you know, Tommy, Pickles, Angelica, the whole squad. Shout out to Chucky. Chucky, you know, Chucky Shout out to everybody. Else. Phil and Lil, my cousin <laughs> named their cats after Phil and Lil. That's hilarious. True story. Yeah, it's a lot. True story. So okay. That was a great – when you walked in with that sweatshirt today, though, I was just like, bravo to that agreement uh, that, that, that they made. But I, I imagine it was a great trip. Morgan, I'll bring you into that too. I mean, I imagine that it was just an awesome trip to see. Totally. It was an awesome trip. There were about five of us um, students. I was the only student athlete, but the other students were part of Warsaw. The, um, the first day we went and saw the Florida Classic game. Cool. That was with Bethune Cook and Florida A&M Rattlers. Cool. I think it was a like eye opening experience for all of us. I'm pretty familiar with the with the HBCU culture, but um, being able to see the looseness in the commentator, cool. as well as like the halftime show, seeing the band, that was really eye opening. It showed us a little bit about their culture and just how much opportunity there is, and you know, learning these things. We had some questions on you know, how the high schools prepare these students for <laughs> being in the band and different things. We were leaving and the band was still going. <laughs> we learned that those were high school kids. So now we're seeing, you know, how those partnerships work. And throughout the weekend, we did some discussions. The first day we did panel discussions. The second day we did a case study about Deion Sanders. And then we had a marketing project where we worked with almost like an unlimited budget. And then we had to consider what would happen if that bu budget was considerably cut. Hmm. So that common was, practice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was really um, eye-opening, also to consider, you know, how creative you have to be and where you can kind of work um, things out. Cool. And then um, that night we got to shadow the men's basketball game. Mm -hmm. We got to work right alongside their marketing interns, see how they did crowd engagement, and get some inside scoop on, you know, what they prioritize, what their fans prioritize, huh. what works, and how they adapt. And so I want to go back a, a little bit. You mentioned partnering with the Warsaw Group. For those that are unfamiliar, the Warsaw Sports Business Club is a part of the, the Lundquist College of Business here at the U of O. And so that was part of the connection. Definitely. So the only student athlete, but some other students that got a lot out of this uh, nice. also. So that was part of the, the, the connection. And then you talked a little bit about that case study. I wanted to, to ask you about that. So that was part of like a sports business summit, right? Correct. So this was the Legacy Series Sports business summit it was a whole experience um all of us were pretty much sports business minors oh cool we had some journalism representation i'm a product design major um bravo and then <laughs> some business <laughs> school stuff so we were all interested in switching our career to go towards sports support sports sure yeah well welcome uh if you can't see there's lots of you know <laughs> sports <laughs> marketing and, and and sponsorship uh within the studio so that's awesome so how did it start like take us back in time how did you get connected to to be like yeah this is something i want to go do yeah so i'm a part of black student athletes united i'm part of the exact board and damon mentioned it to us and of course being a sports mi business minor i had to hop on the opportunity i looked into the application and I was like okay this is awesome this is wonderful and I throughout the process I learned that they asked us what we were interested in they asked us if we were more interested in the marketing side the communication side or what and so I just kind of followed through with it and cool Damon would ask you know does that sound fun does this sound fun that was awesome and then we'd start doing zoom meetings to meet the FAMU student athletes as well, mm. and start collaborating that way. That's awesome. Well, I got to get a quick timeout. Morgan Hood is with us from Morgan Acrobatics and Tumbling, fresh off a cross country trip uh, to Florida that we're going to talk a little bit more about. And then it's Damon Merkerson and friends here on Duck Insider today. Yeah. Back after this <laughs> on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield.
Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events com your daily dose of Oregon athletics this is duck insider from Learfield don't you wish your life came with a warning app stop that dog does not want to be petted <laughs> a heads up before something bad happens you should not send that text uh oh Life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can reverse pre-diabetes and prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihadprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> And now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Mm. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack, uh, it's Damon Merkerson and friends, our <laughs> Senior Associate Athletic Director for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging. Morgan Hood, back from the trip. So, <laughs> long flight, though, so well done. I know it had to be worth it after that that, that trip and Sports Business Summit. What else did we miss? I mean, w before I talk a little bit, be Oregon. Mm -hmm. I, I want to finish the subject. Like, what else was the experience like? Just what, what else did you take away from this trip and the Sports Business Summit? Yeah, another thing that stood out about the trip is we went to the Black Archives Museum. Oh, mm. We were mm -hmm. able to see Greek life. We were able to see medicine. We were able to see slavery and different things like that, all the representation. And it was really good to see the history, wow. kind of see like an mm -hmm. authentic, raw version of my history. So, yeah. Yeah. wow. Yeah. I, I can imagine that making a, a trip like this and, and you got a chance to talk with students that are at Florida a and I mean, what – what was that like, too? I mean, just talk about, like, the student stories that you must have been yeah, able to so share. Yeah, so the marketing project that I talked about, we worked in groups, and one of my mem members of my group was from Florida A&M, cool. so we had plenty of time to interact with those kids, and they are all in the sp School of Business and Industry. That's, like, their prestigious school, mm -hmm. um, college of the school, and they talked about the different requirements and how they feel equipped for – the future, one thing that we all took away is they do these introductions. Huh. They don't say my name is. They say I am. Huh. That stuck with us. We, When we went and did our presentations, we were confident and we said that. So it was really cool to see, you know, their knowledge set and what their school is teaching as well as we shared what our school is teaching. They don't have, you know, a sports business track. Mm. So they're more in the corporate realm. Right. It was really good, good to see both sides. Mm -hmm. um, we got to learn about their student athlete experience. We talked about that as well as, you know, schooling. We talked about how their student athletes are expected to do the same internships, to do all sure. that. So it was really nice to see, you know, how everyone is equipped differently. That's awesome. Morgan Hood with us. Uh, so that was just uh, uh, scratching the surface, I'm sure, of, 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 of the entire trip and uh, the entire sports business summit. Uh, hey, well done.
that's <laughs> awesome that you got to, to, to partake in that. Uh, and I, I do want to talk a little bit because we're, we're up against the clock a bit. We got postseason volleyball coming up. So, so Coach yeah, Olmer's yeah, about yeah. to. Oh, yeah, get it. Po- Coach Olmer's about to take our intern over there, Gabe, out <laughs> when, he, when he opens the door. <laughs> I, I can promise you. Um, be Oregon. You brought props today. I did. I did. I did. Well, yeah. you know, this. Uh, uh, I want to give Morgan a shout out because she did c- incredible at the sports summit and, you know, was very engaged along with the other students. But uh, this month is Native American Heritage Month. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our student athletes, our staff, we've been doing a lot of recognition, a lot of education. Uh, a group of students actually went out to St. Paul's mm-hmm. to do some education, some of the classes there to talk about Native American Heritage Month. And uh, and our student athlete advisory committee, Look at they, that. they came up together with a land acknowledgement with our B Oregon mark and then signatures for some of the students. So that's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and land acknowledgements are just, you know, uh, acknowledging that the land who it belonged to just to avoid erasure of history. So it's, it's the first step in conversation. The next step is action and advocacy. So uh, this is just a small step of what we're going to do as a department uh, in terms of engaging in, in this space. That's a lot of names. It is a lot of names. It was a lot, a lot of ink. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of work went into that thing, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's sweet. Well, thanks for what you've done. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks for what you've continued to do. And I'm glad now that we have a regular segment that we can call Damon and Friends. Damon and Friends. Do, and do, 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 do. The logo okay. is coming soon. <laughs> logo, yes. He said he would do his own a cappella version of the bed music. Got you. I'm working on it. I'm you know, work if on you it. need somebody to, to accompany you, Matt oh. Omer. <laughs> oh, man, I'm looking right Matt at him. Matt yeah. can, uh, can probably do a nice jazzy rendition, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Of, I'll beatbox. Yeah, I'll see? Beatbox. <laughs> see? See? God. You know, that's just a championship level <laughs> pivot on the show that I did not see coming today. That's awesome. Morgan, thanks for being here. Thank you um, for having me. Hey, you're welcome anytime. Uh, seriously. And, and, and Damon, thanks for having friends. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks for Good to have friends. <laughs> Damon Merkerson. Uh, if you, could you give Morgan a, a, a bump for me? Yeah. Cause Woo! thank there you. It is. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, if, if you, if you just tuning in and you miss any of what we were talking about, part of the sports business summit and the pack and swack Alliance, uh, it's, Great stuff. Uh, Back on demand wherever you tune into the show. It's worth your time. When we come back, something else that's worth your time. One, reviewing Senior Day and a legendary performance from the head coach. Two, postseason volleyball at Matthew Knight Arena on Thursday and Friday. The head coach joins us next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Make the most of your holidays with a new Toyota at Toyotathon. From ski trips to holiday shopping. You'll be thanking yourself all season long. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers end December 5th. Toyota finance January 2nd. Participating dealers only. Toyota. Let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you. On the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Make the most of your holidays with a new Toyota at Toyotathon. From ski trips to holiday shopping. You'll be thanking yourself all season long. Dealer inventory may vary. Current offers end December 5th. Toyota finance January 2nd. Participating dealers only. Toyota. Let's go places. Don't go anywhere. Duck Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, so what's a great way to spread awareness that driving high is illegal everywhere? A catchy song, of course. You can. Friendly reminder, don't drive high. If you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends, surprise parties, camps, birthdays. The same way you plan for the important moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Oh, 
season volleyball. Matt Ulmer greater than Taylor Swift, according to the whiteboard hand. Oh, man. Oh, Alex Simpson with just coming in hot. This is great. I'll hey, take it. Postseason volleyball officially here Thursday, this Thursday. Yeah. Iowa State against Hawaii at 4 o'clock. And then Oregon, Matt Ulmer's Ducks against Southeastern Louisiana at 7 o'clock. Then the winner of the two will play Friday at 7 p.m. He is the Oregon volleyball head coach, a two seed. In the NCAA tournament, Matt Ulmer joins us. Coach! What a week. How are you? What a week. Hey, you've been building to this, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. We have. All right. In a lot of ways. Yeah! Of ways. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Um, all right. Before we go any further, because I need, I can tell that you just need to get this out of your system. I have nothing. Uh, those of you who missed it, you're going to hear what was honestly a great rendition of the national anthem. I had been saying it for months that Coach Ulmer was going to do a great job. I even got a picture and an image and a review of the rehearsal from Alex oh, Stimson you. before everyone heard it live. It was supposed to be a closed practice. Uh, yeah. Huh. There the was only four people in that, in that sign, building. I the, wonder who it was. The signs weren't posted. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. And so those of you that don't know what the heck we're talking about, if you've been under a rock, I suggested, like, dyeing his hair, and he was like, no, maybe I'll just sing the anthem on senior night if Duck fans break the season ticket record. Duck fans, you shattered the season ticket record shattered. this year. Shattered. It was awesome. It was. And as a result, Matt Ulmer, and I loved the way that P.J. Reese introduced you as – What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Great. I was already just performing. In my head oh, say, oh, look at him. Can you see? Are your hands in your pockets? Unbelievable. By the dawn's early light. Just, just actually, that sounds okay. Just let it go. What so proudly we hear. I was all I was thinking about was not swearing. At the twilight's <laughs> last gleaming, <laughs> whose broad stripes. The concentration. Okay. And bright stars the roots. Just so you know, the team the is laughing the whole time. No, no. no we got look at them. Shots. Look at Morgan. Look no. at Hannah. Look at this. Yes, they the are. Right. But it's look at them. No. Colby just had a. Absolutely. But they were enjoying it. Look at. Are they? They're all biting their bottom lip. Yeah. And the rocket's red glare. You the it. bombs bursting. In air well gave proof ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. through Woo! the night Woo! 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 that our flag was See, look. still no, there. Daily. Daily's like impressed. Oh, look at PJ. She's videoing PJ's with her voice. Does yeah. that Are you kidding? Star oh, we had multiple cameras. Spangled <laughs> banner yet wave. Look at that. Who is that? I'm just. Look, Taylor Swift. I, I get it now. I get it. Of the free. I almost had no breath left. Uh, yeah. yeah, but listen to the crowd. And yeah. the whole. Now I'm staring at them all. Yeah, you are just mean mugging your team right now. Break. Woo! Metal well everybody. Look, you did great. Okay, I have to tell everybody. It sounded okay. Both my wife and my sister. My sister was there live. My wife was not. Mm -hmm. They both said that she had a little Michael Buble in you. Ooh, wow. Wow. Can we all – look, everyone who's in the studio, just good job, Coach. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. I, I was – I got all the words. You, you did, yeah. I got the you, words. You did everything that a national anthem singer is supposed to do. And you know what was the best part for a broadcaster? Everyone budget, budgets two minutes – for the national anthem and minute 53 yes sir it's no dave butler but it's close it's close it's close minute you were you were right on bo nick's territory okay that's of the two minute well, I'll take story that. so look good job thank you really well thanks. done was thanks. it was thanks it for worth, encouraging me to do was that. it worth the build up no uh, <laughs> no, it, no it hey number one on the west coast in attendance yeah Number one. 
Let's go, so, Ducks. Absolutely, absolutely worth it. See? You know, small price to pay. And you know what? And it's going to be even better this weekend. Darn right it is. Yeah, not the anthem, of course, but, you know. Right. right. Oregon, southeast, southeastern Louisiana. Yep. I keep wanting to say Southeast Louisiana State because... And I said that one time, so I apologize because that's not right. Southeastern Louisiana. Why do we want to say that? Because of base, it was a baseball opponent one time. Okay. Got it. Yeah, so... Yeah, anyway, Southeastern Louisiana. Southeastern University. Louisiana, yeah. 7 o'clock, and then uh, the winners of the first two plan ahead for Friday at 7 o'clock also. Also, tickets are on sale. GoDucks.com. If yeah. you go to GoDucks.com right now, you will be greeted by two postseason splash pages. One of them for football and the other is for volleyball. Home volleyball, Let's baby. Let's party. Let's party. It's going to be great. Let's rock it. Look, and here's my plan. Oregon football is just going to be smoking Washington by 7 o'clock so you all can just check out volleyball and you won't even need it, – it, yeah, that's Boom. my plan. Over early. Yeah. Over early. Over at halftime. Okay. That's the hope. I like it. Yeah. I believe the, that. That's the plan. I believe it. Also, all Pac-12 selections came in today. What a day. How about this? Mimi Collier, Gabby Gonzalez, Morgan Lewis, Kara McGee, and Hannah Pukis all honored by the Pac-12. That's five on the all-conference team. Um and Carson and Georgia, honorable mention, all seven. And that's a uh, that's a program record, Coach. Yeah, it's crazy. Bravo! They all deserve it. Yeah, I think I think it's a Pac-12 record. I don't think all seven have made a team before. Pretty Stanford amazing. Stanford also did. They had six on the team and then one honorable mention. Because I think I saw them post that that was the first time they've had it done. So if that's the first time they've done it, it's got to be. I bet it's the first time it's happened. And then we both did it in the same year. Just tells you how and that's good voted the conference on, is. And that's voted on by the league's head coaches. That's yeah. a lot of respect from your peers. Really neat. Yeah. I'm really happy for our team, and I think it was really well-deserved. I, I Again, we've talked about it a lot, and I think the coaches, you know, I, um, I think that's how they voted is that it's such a deep team. You know, if you take one away, then somebody else is, is ready to take you down. And so I think that's what's made us so good is, is, is the group. Um, it's been a really good team, so I'm, I'm excited to see where we go further. But I was just really happy for all of them that they got recognized, and I think it's well-deserved. Yeah, that's so cool. Matt Ulmer joining us. Uh, postseason volleyball hosted at Matthew Knight Arena. Ducks are a two-seed in the NCAA tournament, so the first two rounds are at Matthew Knight Arena on Thursday and Friday. Again, tickets on sale. Go to GoDucks.com. Now that it's the postseason, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it, it's a good time for me to ask a really general question. Okay. After the regular season, yep. all the subjects that you've covered talking and all the interviews yeah. that you've done, like, can you sum it up for us? Where are you at with your team going into the postseason? Uh, I think we're playing our best ball. I do. I think, uh, you know, again, there's things we've been tinkering with the whole year trying to get ready for this. Um, it looks as good as it's looked for us. Um, I think practice last two days were as good as we've looked. I think we feel mm -hmm. good. I think I think most importantly, they're, they're excited. You know, I think the team's excited. I think they're so happy to be home for the first two rounds. I think there's a lot of energy, positive energy in the group. And I think, you know, uh, again, when you're coming off of last year, like you're, you want to get back to this point again, and now you want to make it better. And I think for the group, like they understand the assignment and they're ready for it. So, um, you know, I, I feel as good as I can feel going into the tournament. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's at this point, it, you're always going to play great competition. That's that's the privilege of playing in the tournament is, you know, you're only going to get really good teams. And Southeastern Louisiana is a great team. They've had so much success. Um, they do a lot of things really well. And it'll be a great challenge for us. But I know we're up to it. 26 and 5 during the regular season, 16 and 4 in Pac-12 play. You had the resume to to earn the spot that you're at. I, yeah. I wanted to say it that way like I think that there's always this conversation you and I have had it about jockeying for position, yeah. but the fact is that you're one of the teams that made the postseason and you're one of the top seeds for a good reason. Yeah, I really thought we had a chance to be anywhere from 4 to 6. Hmm. Um overall and that was one of our goals to, you know, is to get that 4 seed or a top 4 seed so we could be home for a long time. I'm really proud of the group because it's really hard to do and the fact that I think we we're really in the conversation to the end is a great testament to the group. Um, you know, but I um, you know, we're thrilled to be back-to-back -back years at home have playoff games. Yeah. You know, that's a standard that I hope you know, that the next group coming up will want to continue to uphold. Um, I think, you know, from a head coach's perspective, a goal for the program is that we're always playing home playoff games, um, you know, every year that we had that chance. And so, you know, we've never done that in our program. We've never been able to do back-to-back -back years at home. So this is really neat. And our fans, you know, have been loyal and enthusiastic. You know, they're really excited about it. Um, you know, so just to be able to give them playoff games, to have NCAA tournament games in Eugene, 
you know, I think is something that, you know, every team is striving for and, and we get to do that. And here's a, a point that, that I'll make on, on or for the fans. It, it, it runs because it's an NCAA event, technically. It runs a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So even more important yeah. for fans to bring the energy for your home crowd. Yeah, right? like we don't get to do shout. We don't get to do things that are unique to our home games necessarily. It's got to be much more NCAA it's as opposed to Oregon. A- Neutral, neutral site. site exactly so that's why you know if the fans can show up and bring our Oregon energy then that that is a, a huge advantage so and I know I know they will if shout just happens to break out yeah I mean it's a very popular song you know it's used right. in a lot of different places so I, you know if you happen to hear it maybe you know yeah I don't know I I'm just you know if it just happens to break yeah. out in between yeah, some just sets enjoy it. during a big timeout right yeah maybe who's to know yeah who's to say what but if we hear it do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, good. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, good. And you're coming off the the end of the regular season, too. Like, getting a win over your rival is always a big yeah. deal. You know, you you got to celebrate senior night, but then, like we said last week, you get to come back and have them in Matthew Knight Arena again. Yeah. Uh, you, you talked about peaking at the right time. Finishing strong is important, too. Like, you're not limping into the postseason, I guess, is the best we're way to say it. We're 9-1 in our last 10. Our one loss is to Stanford at Stanford in five, which I th- actually thought was our best volleyball of those 10 matches. Interesting. Um, you know, even though we lost it, um, we got some days off last week, which was good. Um, so I feel like, you know, we got some old old bodies. So I think just getting them a little bit of, little bit of a rest is, was important. You rested your um, vocal cords. My, I, I feel better now. Thank you. Um, you know. <laughs> I'm never doing that again, by the way. It's I should. Never, no, it's going to happen again. again. But well, I so should just hold say, on to that video. Coach Omer, Coach Omer was actually a little under the weather. Like it helped, I think. And you nailed it. Still, I think it calmed the nerves that I was just like trying to breathe. So, so you're not going to do it again? Never again. Why? Yeah. I, what What about when we break good. the season ticket record next year? I didn't think a lot about volleyball. You know, going into the game, I think that oh, probably I should probably have that focus a little bit more. Right. I don't know. It just but felt that's like, what that's what a good assistant uh, coaching staff. Because I was trying staff, to remember the words. That's what a good assistant coaching staff is for. To sing. No. Yes, that's what they should no, do. To, I to be thinking about volleyball. Yeah, I feel like I should get a point on the board, by the way. For yeah, you know what? Yep. Yeah. That's got to be right. at least one. You're right? right. So the Ulmer clan currently leads the Dillard clan on, on the scoreboard that yeah. we haven't adjusted in a while. Eight to seven. I mean, you know. I mean, if singing the national anthem in front of the world is only one point, like then they're going to have to do something I think it's real. Two. Two. They're going to have to do but, some real but good to let get me, some let points. Let me just say this. We gave two points to assistant coach, associate head coach Erica Dillard for coaching like within days of giving birth. Okay, so, see, so now are that, we saying – I mean, that's valid. Are we saying that, that – yeah, I mean, Ulmer's up 10 to 7 now. Yeah, that's valid. But is singing the anthem yeah, And you know why it's valid? Because I know they're not planning on having any more kids. So she can't get any more two two first, okay? That's done. Well, all right then. That's done. So, so that, that helps. But I think this that, lead is getting but wait, safe. Hear me out. Hear me out. What if it just becomes such an annual thing that it's just you just do it and you're really thinking about volleyball, but it's just so second nature to just to just have an anthem performance. If there. we average four thousand next year a game, I'll do it again. Handshake. We're at 3,500 this year. If we average 4,000, Coach Ulmer will will become an annual performer for the anthem. Why do I talk? I don't know. There's recording of this. Everyone saw it. It's going to be a great Why postseason. Do I do it? Great postseason. It will be coming up Thursday. Iowa State and Hawaii at four mm-hmm. o'clock. Oregon, Southeastern Louisiana, seven o'clock. The winners play Friday at 7 o'clock. He's Oregon Volleyball Head Coach Matt Ulmer. He's a great guy, heck of a performer, and maybe the Christmas album is coming next. I have a playlist. I mean, we could, we'll figure that out. Let's get to that 4,000 average next year, folks. Oregon I'm Volleyball. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Oh, this could be good. See? Yeah. Once I used to know. You know, Scott yeah. plays guitar. Do you really? Let's do it. Hmm. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> He's Matt Ulmer. Go to break coach. already. Thursday and Friday, postseason volleyball at Matthew Knight Arena. GoDucks.com for tickets. See ya. Go after Ducks. this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you. 
on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by your local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. My name is Teresa Barber. I was in the United States Navy and I served overseas in the Middle East and Africa. Early on in my career, I had a commander that taught our suicide prevention training and the very next day he took his own life. 90% of suicide attempts involving a gun are fatal. My way of continuing my service is to help protect my community by being a responsible gun owner and by storing firearms safely. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. Brought to you by N Family Fire and the Ad Council. This message is for Karina. Our mom will finish her high school diploma at age 28. Hi, Mom. It's Amethyst and Nicholas. Congratulations on getting your diploma. You work so hard and have taught us so much. We, we love, love you. When you graduate, they graduate. Finish your high school diploma for you and for them. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. The Christmas album is coming soon. God, that was so good. Postseason volleyball, postseason football this week. Thursday and Friday at Matthew Knight Arena. Duck volleyball is in action in the postseason. Win these two, you're in the Sweet 16. Got to go through Wisconsin. Talk about that next week. Got to take care of business this week first, though, in order to talk about that next week. Whew. What a show. Wow. Coach Lanning to lead us off. Damon and friends. Damon Merkerson and Morgan Hood, kind enough to join us reviewing that, that, that trip to Florida A&M. Matt Ulmer, legendary, as always. What else did we do today? Oh, we did a number of student-athlete interviews uh, after practice with Duck Football, and I'm happy to report that all of them are currently up on GoDucks.com's YouTube channel. And tomorrow, we'll have, like, all of them for you. I'm about to talk to Tony Castrocone, voice of the Huskies. You think we should cut him off before we let him say go dogs? I think we will. See you tomorrow. And here's Heather with the weather. Well, it's beautiful out there, sunny and 75, almost a little chilly in the shade. Now, let's get a read on the inside of your car. It is hot. You've only been parked a short time, and it's already 99 degrees in there. Let's not leave children.